dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Ilona Massey in The Lady from Luxembourg, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where your screen favorites from the cinema world join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. The beautiful and glamorous Alona Massey, international star of motion pictures in the concert stage, will appear in a romantic story titled The Lady from Luxembourg. We'll have our curtain for Act One in just a moment. And here now is Wendell Niles with this message of importance. Only the best can be aviation cadets. And now because your United States Air Force is planning for the future and wants the best young men, special consideration is being given to this year's college graduates who want careers as leaders in aviation. As officers in your United States Air Force, if you're graduating this June, apply now for aviation cadet training. As a college graduate, your application will be rushed so that you can begin training as soon as you graduate. Visit your U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station today to make certain you're accepted for one of this summer's aviation cadet classes. Remember, only the best can be aviation cadets. And now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Lady from Luxembourg, starring Alona Massey as Countess Marie de Cordova. The place, the city of Luxembourg. The year, 1880. This gay European capital radiated the tempo and spirit of the time, a time of beautiful Strauss waltzes, of magnificent receptions and light-hearted social affairs, a time of romance. In the premier suite of the elegant Hotel de Ville in Luxembourg, there's an air of hushed excitement. Reason, the arrival of the Countess Marie de Cordova, the most beautiful, the most glamorous woman in all Europe. The very nervous hotel manager, a Mr. Tinko, is showing the Countess Maria and her Aunt Cecilia through the suite. I, uh, I, 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 I do hope, Countess, you will find the utmost satisfaction here. Thank you. Now, if you will pause one moment, please. Here is the retinue which accompanies the suite. Oh, oh augmented for you, of course. Of course. Her butler, housekeeper, three maids, pantry boy, and chef. I presume that will be sufficient. Yes, uh, if you will double that staff. Double the staff? Mm-hmm. Should I decide to remain here, the two staffs will share the duties. I dislike intensely keeping a household working like peasants. Oh, how generous of you, and it shall be done. Now, if you would care to follow me this way, please, this All way. Right. Uh, uh, here is your sitting room, Countess. We are particularly proud of this, because we read in the Paris papers of how you favor forget-me-nots. So, we have flowered draperies for your sitting room in forget-me-nots. <laughs> Interesting. And, by the way, Countess, the balcony off your sitting room here is decorated with Milan tile. Milan tile? Oh, yes, I thought, what a coincidence. Your friendship with the Duke of Milan. The Duke of Milan being in Luxembourg? I am not at all interested in coincidences. Oh, oh, oh forgive me. Uh, uh, truly, I meant not to presume, but merely to point out all the features of this suite. Well, what do you say, Countess? I'll take the suit. Oh, thank you, Countess. You may have my luggage sent up. And do be careful with my special love birds. Oh, yes, Countess. Oh, by the way, do you have distilled water? Only the most pure. My birds will require an eyedropper full of your purest distilled water each day. And I wish you would give that your personal attention. Oh, I will, Countess. Uh, the entire hotel staff is at your service. Uh, good, good morning. Goodbye. <laughs> the entire staff is at our service. If he only knew. What? That you are without funds. That you are broke. That's what. Oh, Cecilia, you always manage to bring up the most undesirable subject. Here, help me with my coat. Well, my dear, you must face facts. Here you blithely go doubling your staff of servants, choosing the most costly suite in all Luxembourg. And why? 
I am accustomed to champagne, Cecilia. Well, my dear, that may be true. But you can't even afford beer. No, not even the pretzel that goes with it. It's my worry. Oh, you are insane, Marie. Taking a place that costs you 5,000 francs a day. Unless? Unless what? Unless you plan to accept the Duke of Milan's proposal of marriage made in Paris. Well, that could be as good a reason as any. Oh, Marie, then you are actually contemplating it. One must be practical, I suppose. I'll, I'll answer it. Well, I, I think this is the most exciting... Oh, it's you again. Oh, uh, merely carrying out the Countess's instructions. Well, bring them in. Oh, you have my birds. How nice. And your distilled water, Countess. Well, what makes them so happy? Listen to them sing. I was thinking, Countess, it could be the sweet. Or even the presence in Luxembourg of the Duke of Milan. Why? 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 They've stopped singing suddenly. Why, yes. Well, you may go, Monsieur Tinkle. First, Countess, these flowers are for you. Thank you. And there's already quite a collection of personages waiting to see you. Thank you. Cecilia will take care of that. Oh, very well. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Look at my poor birds. Why? Well, they have been silenced. Oh. Well, open the flowers. Uh, who is the bouquet from? Why, four dozen yellow roses from the Duke of Milan. Lovely, aren't they? Yes. Oh, but, but who sent me those beautiful forget-me-nots? They are so gracious, so fragrant. Well, uh, they're from an American businessman, William Blodgett. Why, my birds are singing again. That's strange. Anyhow, Cecilia, in regard to those people waiting to see me, just separate the wheat from the shop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to freshen up, and then I'll see the most important ones. Well, Cecilia, what have we? Well, first, there's a representative of the London Times. Mm -hmm. He desires to interview you on your opinion of the new fashions. Oh, not today. Tell him that, in my opinion, uh, women for generations to come will constantly be looking for that new look. Very well. Perhaps that will hold him. And now there's that American who insists he wants to see you, William Blodgett. He says he has a business proposal for you. Oh, I can't be bothered. But, my dear, you will have the expenses of the wedding and your trousseau. Perhaps it would be wise to speak to him briefly. Well, I... And he's quite handsome, too. A tall, blonde giant. All right. By all means, let me talk to him. No, no, no. You will only discuss business, my dear. I'll, uh, I'll bring him in. <laughs> Countess Marie de Cordova, may I present the American businessman, William Blodgett. I'm charmed, Countess... Well, say, what happened to your lovebirds? Well, uh, I don't know. I've never heard them sing like this. Uh, Mr. Blodgett, what sort of a man are you? Well, you don't suppose that I... You see, at the mention of your name, I, my birds just burst into a song. Twice now. Uh, Cecilia, I suppose you will have to put a cover over them to quiet them. Yes, Countess. And now, Cecilia, you will leave the American gentleman and myself alone, please. Hmm. Now, uh... Countess de Cordova, as I was saying before your lovebirds interrupted me, I'm charmed beyond words. It's sweet of you. Standing there by the fireplace as I look at you, I know now why they call you the most beautiful woman in all Europe. Oh, you're very charming. Had I not rehearsed this over and over again, I, I, I assure you the very sight of you would make words impossible. I must confess to being a trifle weak in the knees. Well, do sit down, Mr. Blodgett. You, thank you. Oh, no, not... Not at the end, I was. <laughs> thought that was rather narrow. Uh, sit uh, here by me. There. Now, uh, what is this business proposal? The Countess, I represent an American firm, the Apex Corporation. Mm -hmm. We manufacture women's products. We desire your endorsement. Well? I needn't add what it would mean to my firm, having the most beautiful woman in the world associated with its products. On the Riviera, before entering the surf, Countess Maria de Cordova always dons an Apex hairnet. Interesting. Or dancing in the George V in Paris was the Countess Marie de Cordova, who insists that she herself prefers and that the most fashionable French dressmakers always use Apex bustles. Yes, I see. Uh, you are willing to pay for this. Oh, not that it matters, but... My uh, company is prepared to pay you $10,000. Well... And I, Countess de Cordova. Yes? I, Countess, at the merest whisper from you, would walk to the end of the earth. 
Cecilia. Ah, yes, Countess, what is it? Oh, oh Cecilia, uh, put two covers over my lovebirds. One does not seem to do the trick. Obviously, Countess. Uh, and, uh, um, Mr. Blodgett, I, I think uh, we should discuss your proposal further this evening. You honor me. By candlelight, if you wish. It would never be otherwise. Is this as you would wish it? Yes, even to the Strauss waltz. You like the Strauss music? Like everyone. But then, since I know Johann so well, I like it even more. I can't get over it. Over what? You. There's nothing like you in Toledo. Toledo? Is that your state? City. My state? Uh, that is one of enchantment at this moment. You know, you seem to exercise such such power over, over my lovebirds. Why? I don't know. I will say this, however. In regard to our discussion this afternoon, I'm retracting my offer. You are? Yes. At the risk of being a traitor to the firm I represent, I retract it. But why? You are much too lovely to be associated commercially with a lonely hairnet. <laughs> Besides, I have far more important things to discuss with you the ten days remaining to me in Europe. Like what? Like trying to induce you to be my wife. Well... Really? No, I... no, I understand that I'm one among hundreds of the royalty of Europe's at your fingertips. The Duke of Milan, for example. Oh, you mustn't. You mustn't. I can't help myself. Tell me something, Marie. Could you marry a man for himself alone? How can I answer that? I believe you could, Marie. I have wanted to. I will tell you that. And you will. And I'll make sure of it, even if I have only ten days' time. Oh, you are a fool to talk like this. But don't stop. Don't stop. Well, at last you're back. Each evening, it's Bill Blodgett. Never mind, Cecilia. Did anyone call? Yes, yes, yes. The Duke of Milan was here, demanding to know why you've avoided him these past few days, wanting to discuss his new invention with you. Oh, dear. Not to mention the fact that the butler wants his pay, demands it volubly now. Oh, no. And the hotel management is getting downright rude about their statement. Oh, Marie, you're going to have to climb down off your cloud and face facts. I suppose you're right. Well, if it's to be done... And if it's to be the Duke of Milan, I am to be practical also, and I shall be very practical. Get me a pen and paper. Yes, there's some right here, I believe. Yes, because here you are. Thank you. To Monsieur Charles Rothschild, Bang de France, Paris. Charles, dear, I know I have your confidence. You may have heard rumors that I am to marry the Duke of Milan. Knowing me as you do, my manner of living, I hesitate to marry the Duke, only to bankrupt him. Would you be a dear and let me know precisely the Duke's position financially? Affectionately, Marie. Oh, dear. What is it? Listen. I hear nothing. Well, that's just it. No sound. I'm afraid I have silenced my lovebirds. Forever. We pause briefly from our story, The Lady from Luxembourg, starring Alona Massey, to bring you an important message from our government. Ladies and gentlemen, our Army and our Air Force are critically short of physicians and dentists. Over 2,000 volunteers from these two professions are urgently needed today to safeguard and care for the health of the men and women who, as members of the United States Army and United States Air Force, are serving you and me at home and overseas. Young physicians and dentists, particularly those who did not serve in the armed services during World War II, have been asked by their government to act now to volunteer for duty at once. If you are one of these young physicians or dentists, please write or wire either the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once and volunteer your services. If you know one of these young physicians or dentists, please call his attention to this urgent message. Thank you. Thank you.
And now, the curtain rises on Act Two of The Lady from Luxembourg, starring Alona Massey as Countess Marie de Cordova. Marie de Cordova, the most beautiful woman in all Europe, has fallen in love with Bill Blodgett, the American representative of the Apex Corporation. Bill, who now has only a day or two more in Europe, has proposed to the Countess. But the Countess, plagued by a 5,000-franc hotel bill and a mercenary Aunt Cecilia, has succumbed to the proposal of the Duke of Milan, inventor and manufacturer, supposedly one of the ten wealthiest men on the continent. As our scene opens, the Duke enters Marie's apartment, escorted by Cecilia. Oh, good evening, good evening, my dear Duke. Hello. Marie has been waiting for you on pins and needles. Oh, really? Oh, Marie, <laughs> he's here. He's I'm here. able to hear you. Uh, good evening, yes. Marie. Uh, dear. Good evening. I suppose I may say dear, now that our betrothal plans have been made. Oh, you can <laughs> say more than that, my dear Duke. Well, words cannot express the thrill. I want only to say I'm going to considerable expense for the announcement party. It's costing me considerable money. Money? Oh, yes, that. Yes, I'm hiring the famous Strauss Orchestra. Uh, since it is for you, Marie, Johann is coming to Luxembourg himself. That will be lovely. Yes, the expense is worth it, uh, I'm sure. <clears throat> uh, that is all I have to say. I shall be going now. Oh, must you rush like this, Duke? Oh, yes. I'm preoccupied with my latest invention. Oh, but you haven't told Marie about that. No, it is the... Every time I think of it, I feel like bursting from the skin that I should create something so magnificent. Well, what is it? A spaghetti stretcher. Oh, no. Yes. It is going to revolutionize the business. Right now, I have three factories producing. I'm able to get twice the yield as before. How fascinating. And you want to know something? Yes, by all means. When I have the European markets established, I'm going to branch out into another field. What's that? Strudel. The possibilities are unlimited. That's why I'm so happy we are being married now. You, dear, have so many contacts all over Europe. Well, I go now. Oh, must you? Yes, back to my spaghetti meditation. Good evening. Good, Good night. Evening. Good night. Oh, think of it, Marie. He's actually hiring the Strauss Orchestra for your announcement party. Fascinating. What's the matter with you? I'm wondering if I should have accepted before I heard from Charles Rothschild. Well, my dear, the Duke of Milan's financial integrity is without question. I suppose. At any rate, I will have to tell Bill. Listen, that's the first time either of them has sung. Ever since Bill... Bill Blodgett. Oh, my dear. Why do you make it so hard on yourself? Why not merely write him a note? Oh, but I want to see him once more. This whole thing is ridiculous, and I refuse to believe it. No, Bill. I am marrying the Duke. You can't. Well, you didn't even give me a chance. I still have two days to go. Please don't argue with me. Of course, I realize I am not precisely a bargain package. Oh, Bill, it's no use. But I'd be good to you. I'd be kind to you. I wouldn't smoke old pipes around the house. Please, Bill. I wouldn't flick ashes on the carpeting. Wouldn't track mud into your house. Well, I, I'd even take you on my fishing trips. But, Marie, most important of all, I, I'd love you and adore you. Bill, don't. Now look at me. Tell me you don't love me. Oh, Bill, I can't do that. But I will look at you and tell you that tomorrow night, Cecilia will announce my engagement to the Duke of Milan. That I want to see. I really do. Oh, isn't it exciting? 
I somehow feel quite placid. Oh, how can you say that? Everyone is here. Everyone? You're not still thinking of that bludgeon. Don't ask me. Oh, look at the Strauss Orchestra and Johann himself present. It is impressive. When shall I make the announcement? I suppose the sooner the better. As soon as the music stops. Oh, there's Johann. He's coming over this way. Oh, Cecilia. Oh, Marie. Oh, Johann. It's so good to see you. Your music is lovely. Oh, thank you, Cecilia, but I seldom conduct anymore. Mary, you look lovely, my dear. Thank you, maestro. Oh, Johann, isn't it wonderful? I... Oh, the music has ended. I'm going to make the announcement now. No. No, Cecilia. Wait until I, I find my bearings. I tell you when. In that case, I have an announcement to make. I wish to dedicate the next waltz to you. Ladies and gentlemen, the next waltz is titled Cordova Cantabile in honor of Countess Marie de Cordova. Oh, the melody is beautiful, Johan. The young lady who inspired the melody is more beautiful, my dear. <laughs> Flatterer. Oh, the Marquis de Bourbon has just nodded to me. I won't be a moment, dear. That announcement has me all in a city. Well, Mary, I understand you're taking a husband. Hmm? Yes. Do you know the Duke of Milan? No, I've never met him, although I've, mm, I've heard of him. What do you think, Johan? My dear, what does it matter what I think? They are usually does the thinking in such affairs as these, and, and justly so. Yes, Johan, you are so right. Is that the young man there, standing on the stairway, <laughs> looking as if he could devour you? Yes. Yes, Johan. He is the one. Excuse me. Bill! Marie, where are you going? Oh, Bill. Marie. Take me with you. never see anything like it. Walking out. Walking out on the Duke of Milan. Help me pack, will you? Just like that, she says. Help me pack. Oh, the embarrassment of it all. Not to mention our hotel bill. Well, manage. Hurry now. Bill is coming soon. Do you think... Do you think you like America? How can you so blithely... Oh, here's a note that came by special messenger today. Let me have it. Uh, well? Well, it's from Charles Rothschild. Yes. The Duke of Milan is one of the wealthiest men in Europe. Oh! Come in. I am much too faint to answer the door. Hello. Oh, it's the Duke. Uh, may I come in? Of course. Uh, you know, I, I meant to write you a letter explaining oh, it. Oh, it is all right. No hard feelings. There is just one thing. I was counting on the commercial possibilities of our marriage. I wondered if you would do me one favor. Of course. Anything you say. You are such a good friend of Johannes Strauss. Uh, could you get him to write the strudel wars to coincide with the marketing of my new strudel? I will talk to Johann. I promise you. Oh, thank you. Uh, that would at least defray the expense of the party. Uh, good night. Good night. Oh, my dear. Letting all that spaghetti just walk out of the door. I know what I am doing. I knew from the beginning... But I didn't have the courage. What are you talking about? I have shown you, Cecilia, how to marry out of the heart and into full security. What are you trying to say? You see, when I wrote Charles Rothschild, I added a small inquiry about Bill. And I discovered that Bill not only represents the Apex Corporation, he is the Apex Corporation. That is, he and his father. No! Yes! <laughs> you don't mean it. Oh, you know, Marie, I have always loved America. <laughs> He's coming over now to tell me who he is, that I stood the test. And I did stand, didn't I? <gasps> there he is now. I'll be right with you, my darling Bill. <sighs> my darling Bill. <laughs> The 
curtain falls in the final act of The Lady from Luxembourg. Our star, Alona Massey, will return for a curtain call after this important message from Wendell Niles. This is important. This is urgent. Over 2,000 young physicians and dentists are needed as volunteers at once for service in the United States Army or United States Air Force. These physicians and dentists are required to safeguard the health of the men and women who are serving our country in the armed services. If you are a physician or a dentist, you are needed now. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once, volunteering for active duty. Let me repeat that. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force today. Or see your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now back at the microphone, our star, Elona Massey, and our producer. Well, Elona, we're very happy to have you here with us in our theater. Thank you, C.P. I have wanted to do a proudly we hail for a long time. And we've wanted you, but you're always so busy, and now I hear that you're going on another hospital tour. Oh? You've been talking to Irving Landy, haven't you? <laughs> yes. In fact, I was just on the telephone with Irving. He said that every one of the stars who signed up last year for the Hollywood Coordinating Committee tour requested to be included in the Veterans Hospital Camp shows this year. It's a very important activity. The tour is to be made twice a year from now on, isn't that it? Yes, that's right. And CP, now that we are on the subject of veterans and servicemen, I'd just like to remind them all that all of us realize how important their mail is, that they always look forward to getting a letter from home. That reminds me, along about now, there's someone else looking for a letter. Here, Alona, is a card for your mother for Mother's Day. Oh, how beautiful. Why, why, that's one of the most exquisite cards I have ever saw. Like it? Oh, it's, it's beautiful. And so was your Christmas card last year. How do you do it? It's a special design card that Margaret Atkinson makes for me at Baza Cardoza. Oh, so that's your secret. <laughs> yes, Ralph Cardoza makes all my greeting cards. Well, I see we've taken care of the hospital tour and Mother's Day. But uh, we've still missed another subject, your current picture... That's very thoughtful of you. Well, my newest picture is Love Happy with Harpo, Chico, and Groucho Marx. I hear that this is to be their last picture together. It should be a riot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It's a Lester Kahn production released through United Artists. And Love Happy will probably open at your favorite theater in the next week or two. But, uh, C.P., who is your star for next week? Next week, Alona, and ladies and gentlemen... Robert Ryan joins us as the star of a documentary story that men may live, a dramatic search for a new and wonderful drug to control the dread typhus disease, a story of a small band of heroic scientists who bet their lives on the success of a new formula that men may live. That sounds like a good one, and I'll make it a point to listen. Goodbye, C.P., and thank you. Goodbye, Alona. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we bring you Robert Ryan in the dramatic story that men may live. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Lona Massey appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script is by Rich Hall, the music under the direction of Eddie Scrivener. Program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Nile speaking.